Hey, what's up? Welcome to Life with Randall. If you didn't know, that's the name of this show because uh, my name is Randall and this is my life. The grass is muddy. <laughs> so you're probably wondering, can men and women be just friends? I mean, you're looking at the title of the video, the unanimous, unequivocal, undisputed <laughs> answer is yes. Men and women can be just friends, okay? You're probably wondering that, yes. Yes, 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 absolutely yes. Roll the credits. Thanks for watching Life with Randall. It's over. Peace. <laughs> Psych, boy. The answer is a big yes, but there's also a big catch. Our culture is led to think otherwise, though. I mean, look at shows like Friends, look at shows like New Girl, look at shows like How I Met Your Mother, uh, look at shows like, I don't know, look at shows like Grey's Anatomy, which I watched five seasons of. We're always assuming that if a guy and a girl are super close, there's bound to be some kind of sprink, sprink? Some kind of sprinkle <laughs> of like something romantic going on. I remember when this had happened with me with a super close friend of mine all the way back in the freshman year of college a couple years ago. Exhibit A. Uh, hey bro, are, are you guys like dating or something? <laughs> this, my friends, is Exhibit A out of many. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh not... no, no, we're uh, we're just friends. I promise. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> okay, you get the idea. I mean, even though there was no intention in either of us to start dating, I'll be honest with you. It, it kind of planted seeds in our head. Like, are. Right, what if we did date? What if we did start today? What would that look like? Would we annoy each other? Yes. Coming from an overly sexualized and hyper-romantic culture, this is something to be expected, man. Some of you might comment on the video and be like, I don't know, don't you know real life? <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, I mean, of course, people do end up in relationships when they're super close friends. I'm not denying that fact. All I'm saying is just because they're close doesn't automatically mean that they're gonna be in a relationship or that they're gonna start dating or that they have to. Look, I'm not gonna pretend like feelings aren't gonna come up or attractions aren't gonna develop. I mean, that's a reality. So how are we gonna navigate that area of our relationships and not see the other as a potential romantic partner or some anything like that or like a potential boyfriend girlfriend what what have you and just see them solely as a brother or sister and to love them accordingly how do we do that we need to be able to set things called boundaries we need to be able to know what to share and how to share it with those of the opposite sex and that's good we can't just go all crazy willy-nilly just revealing every little thing and aspect of our hearts because Men and women will receive things in different ways. Men and women can be friends, yes, but the catch is this, with virtue and with prudence, with chastity. So to say someone is like your brother or sister might be true, but we still have to implement boundaries because there's always gonna be that romantic potential. I'm not gonna deny that. The feelings that develop are out of our control. How we respond to that is completely in our control, and it will be when we develop something called chastity. Chastity is the liberating key to understanding these relationships and overall, just understanding who we are. Hey, hey you, hey you over there. Hey, what's up? How you doing? This is a different day, completely different outfit, clothes, different recording session, whatever. I forgot that I didn't give you guys any practical. So we're gonna get right into that. Practical number one. I would examine my intentions. So if I'm using this person of the opposite sex solely for emotional gratification, then I should check up on that because not only is someone not meant to be used physically, but we are also not meant to be used emotionally. No person should be objectified, whether it be physically or emotionally. And whether we realize it or not, we might be emotionally objectifying another person. We might be only using them for emotional gratification. And if that's the case, practical number two would be to make friends with those of the same sex. So my brothers, 
Find some good brothers in your life and make sure you have good, solid brotherhoods and vice versa for my sisters out there. Because there are going to be things that are only appropriate to be shared with our brothers in relation to their brothers. And vice versa for the sisters out there somewhere in the world enjoying their life, okay? There are things that only the same sex will be able to relate to. Not only that, but if we express something that's like super, 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 super intimate to the person of the opposite sex, then there might develop some kind of attachment or some kind of maybe even romantic feeling that might cause some confusion. And if there's confusion, then someone's going to be, I think this person likes me, but we're only just friends. And then the person on the other end is gonna be like, why do they think I like them? I'm just trying to share my life. We need to be wary of what we say and how we interact. And I just want to be clear. We are not endorsing scrupulosity and we're not endorsing like a complete emotional free for all, okay? Chastity is right in the middle. So we have to just be wary and conscious about what we say and what we do and how much time we spend, where we spend it and who we spend it with. This isn't meant to be some kind of restrictive ideology or anything like that but it's meant to develop emotional maturity so that we can have good and healthy relationships. And we also want to mention that we know we're not mentioning every single circumstance or dilemma or scenario that you guys might be going through. This is just meant to be a starting point. Okay, okay, peace, bye. <laughs>